Welcome to Black, Red, and Blue. I'm AJ, and joined with me as always, Steve. We have another draw and kind of a, a mess of a game, to be honest. There were some highlights, though, and there were some, um, honestly, churds as well. I know how much Steve loves, loves, absolutely loves complaining. Yeah, my favorite. I, I think I guarantee you almost every single podcast is going to bring up the refs. Every single Facebook post is going to bring up the refs. And Reddit, the whole Reddit is going to turn in right. this complaint about refs. It's just going to It's happen, all it is. Right? It's all it is. But I, I'm just going to ask you, frankly, Steve, what do you think about the refs? Um, so, like, yeah, they may suck, but they apparently they suck for everyone. And apparently they suck around the world that it is just, it's everywhere. It's It's endemic where it's like, refereeing is not good for soccer so like yes they were bad tonight but we can overcome it by playing better like i get but what do you want to do about it what do you want to do i see people complaining about for some reason like leaving the league like getting out like, no we can't do that it's not going to get fixed we can't fix it we can't make the refs do better so what we do is we put three to four goals on the board every single night and make them make them beat us. So like I see people complaining it's 13 versus 11 every single night because now we're, we're, we're playing against the other team plus the ref and plus the assistants like VAR and all that jazz. But like we're not doing ourselves any favors. We took 16 shots tonight, I think I saw. And technically we, two in it. You know, one was overturned, but technically two in it. So if you're taking 16 shots and you're only getting two in, it's not a good percentage. We can do better as a squad, and we need to do better as a squad to overcome the refs. So, like, yeah, I'm not big on complaining because complaining does nothing. Yeah, that, that's a good point. You know, and the thing is, is with these refs, there's a lot of variability. Certain refs will call it a penalty. Like, for instance, I, I put on my notes for this game is that this ref seemed very hands off, like especially in the first half. He wasn't calling a lot of challenges, you know, just as well as I right. do. There are some refs that you just even wink at the other player and they're blowing the whistle and you're getting a yellow card. Yeah, this, you know, that that's that's a problem with soccer is that there isn't that consistency. It's very almost like an art rather than a science, like what we would want it to be. But like you said, what can you do to change it? You can't. It just, it's part of the game. And guess what? It ain't going anywhere. It's always been like that. And it always will be like that. Like there might be some things that need clarifying, but you're right. You just got to overcome it. And it just is what it is. But everybody's playing on the same field. And that's the thing. As long as everybody's playing on the same field, you can't complain. It's kind of like the snow game. Remember the snow game where it oh was just like really God, snowy? I Obviously, yeah, the losers gonna... was complaining about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're going to complain about it and be like, well, this wasn't fair. Well, guess what? Both teams had to play in it. As long as both yep. teams have to deal with it, it's fair. Yeah. So I guess one thing I also notice is that the physical level of the MLS, like it needs to, they need to have some sort of like equal footing. Like what does, I don't know, I guess I'm looking for like a baseline of what can be called for a foul or a penalty in the league. If that varies so wildly that like, you don't know if a shove is going to be called. There was an, an actual like pull on a Jersey tonight that was not called that would have been called earlier in the game. So, like, I don't really care about the referees getting everything right, but, like, let's have, like what you're saying, an equal footing. Let's have a baseline of what is a foul, what is not a foul, and expect the refs to do better. But, again, we can we can want that. doesn't look like that's going to happen. Yeah, you mentioned about scoring, and we kind of rolled out with a 4-4-2, with Klaus and then kind of Kojima up on top. And then it was sometime during the second half. I don't know if it was at the beginning or a few minutes into it, 
but we definitely moved to a 4 2 3 1 with Klaus on top, Kojima, and then the wingers. And we, of course, had the score in, a, I think it was the 49th minute with Fast Live. Now, you had brought up how many minutes was it be, since our last goal? It was over 300 minutes that Ooh. the team scored a goal. You know, it was three full games, and then there was, yeah, it's just, it took for, I actually have like a stuffed monkey that I, I had in my classroom that I was going to have and bring it put on my shoulder if we won tonight and scored. But since we didn't win, I just, I kept him in his old, his old dirty box. But like, finally got the monkey <laughs> off our back on scoring, and then we, we up and don't win. But it felt fantastic. And like, that goal was amazing because we it also you just mentioned Klaus it took a player who was just vilified by the fans for the last several games and it just like made him amazing again like that is the cause like he had an amazing assist and Vasilev just took his foot and just crammed that in a goal I love that was an excellent play and we not only did we score AJ but we scored in the run of play which is just like something that we haven't yeah. done. It's like we rely on penalty kicks or rely on stoppage in order to score. But no, that was an actual play. It looked good from start to finish. Like we, I think Reed got in on it and there was a deflection and they didn't give up. And boom, that was a great play. And he Klaus even had that crossbar shot that was like around Ooh. the ninth minute. Yeah. Holy. I, I kind of had a feeling that once I saw that, I was like, okay, Klaus is going to do something tonight. And yeah, yeah. Well, you just described exactly what he did. Right. And it, and you, whenever he kind of like cocked his leg back to shoot, you're like, it's going to go 15 rows up. And it didn't. It bounced off the crossbar. It was a, it was a good shot. And, you know, that's, that's what a DP is supposed to do, isn't it? That's what a DP is expected to do. And he did that. Agreed. It looked good. You know what didn't look good? Thor. I wrote down oh, man. So like Thor right to the goalie. Yep. That was with the Wentzville tournament. Yeah. 18th minute. Thor breakaway misses. And it's just like I kept having notes after notes of Thor just being completely useless. Yeah. And it seemed like in the second half, he was better. Then the first half with like positioning and with like some of the situations you got into, but man, like you and I talked about such cool hair, such a cool headband, such a cool nickname. And it's just, it seems wasted. It seems wasted. Like you got a name like Thor and you got a cool ass <laughs> headband. It's just like the man was getting bodied by everyone out there. He was getting bullied. He was positioning poorly. He had an amazing ball in from Leuven that he just took his time he took his time kind of bouncing towards the goal instead of just getting on it and shooting it and I, he I was, lost a ball that was a perfect service and he just did nothing with it and it's yeah it, it was you and I were in agreement in this that it just it did it wasn't a good look he finally got a start in this uh, heavily rotation and it just it wasn't a good look I, I was not impressed by Thor I'm and you sorry, could tell UTV. you could tell that Leuven, I, I think, actually provided a pretty good game today. Uh, out oh of everybody gosh, on yes. the field, he had the most completed passes at 47, which was 77%. So about average on uh, pass percentage. But you could tell that the ball was going through him just based on that. Successful dribbles, three by Leuven. So you could just tell that we were really kind of jiving through him. And just kind of mention a couple other stats. Chances created, guess who was number one out of both teams? Kloss at four. And then Leuven was uh, wow. number two with three. So uh, I think, uh, I'm sure people did notice Leuven out there, but I feel like he had a pretty classic, good Leuven game overall. Yeah. Like, like usual, Leuven almost always has the highest expected assist on the field whenever he plays. And he had it again tonight. And it showed, like, our midfield with Leuven and Durkin out there, you know, that is the pairing we've been looking for. And they just keep locking it down. I love seeing those two out there. And Leuven, I think I noted, like, you know, I think I had said on Twitter, like, keep Leuven, 
keep this read, keep with Winsel. Can we shoot Thor into the sun? Like, <laughs> let's just go ahead and we can just <laughs> do all that. But I here's the thing. Again, with my complaint, it's who we have. And we we shipped out some some players that some of the fans were kind of down on. The team might have been down on. So, like, we're going to be seeing more of him for the next couple of weeks. And it is what it is. But, like, in the second half, like I said, I, I think he kind of put it together. But, man, yeah, it just wasn't great. It wasn't great. You know, the City 2 guys today, you know, I'm sure we're going to hit that. They were... They're pretty solid, man. Yeah. I got some stats for you. So for Reed here, he completed 31 out of 38 passes, and he had 54 touches. That's quite a bit. I, I felt like he was handling the bell, bought bell. He was handling the ball quite well. I felt like he was yeah. successful moving it. And I didn't really notice too many defensive blunders. I, I could be wrong. I was actually at Buffalo Wild Wings with some friends and the lady and the, the TV was a little bit further off. So it was a little difficult to see, but from what I saw, he seemed like he was doing pretty good. What about you? Yeah, no, I, he must, he was impressive with, to the eye and that's kind of sitting at home. That's what I could see. I could see his, his, his play was really good. His position was good. I was impressed by him. I don't think that for a left back, he did a poor job. You know, some of the left backs that we have, there are some complainings about them. I felt better having him out there than Mark Hennig. I can say that. I felt better Ooh. with him out there, which is weird because, like, you know, they're both young. You know, Mark Hennig's our starter. Reed was – Reed's this guy. And so he's not going to be here for forever. He's just for a, a call-up, of course. But it felt – you know, anytime Mark Hennig touches the ball, you're like, well, I wonder what this is going to happen. No, Reed had good he had, he had good passes. He had good touches like you saw. So I felt really good about Reed. I felt Reed's kind of like a full, complete player, and I would love to see him up here more. And then what did you feel about Winslow? Because I, they actually mentioned, the Apple uh, uh, broadcasters actually mentioned about how he was sometimes over committing, making some uh, young person mistakes, stuff like that. Right. But I also noted that he actually probably saved a goal in the 81st minute when there was on the ground cross in front of the six yard box that he ended up sliding and basically knocking it out for essentially what was yeah. a corner. So, I, I mean, he probably saved this from being a two to one loss, in my opinion. But I don't know. There was a few misses, I would have to say. Yeah. With you know, he, so I, as good as I felt about like Reed, I felt like kind of like half as good about when, so like he made yeah. some decent plays, boy, he put himself out of position multiple times to allow shots on goal that just shouldn't have happened, but he did make that good save towards the end and he played the majority of the game. Like he, he didn't, it wasn't, he wasn't a halftime sub. He played a very large position part of the game so clearly he was doing well enough to stay out there you know I don't think that he probably caused angry Berkey as much as some of the other center backs we have but you know I think I think angry Berkey is my going to be like my my spirit animal I think like, <laughs> like, like like with his big old mitts and just hanging out there but I wasn't as impressed with Wenzel I don't think he's ready yet but I mean he wasn't horrible. Like, yeah, he was just there, right? Because this was a rotation game, and that's what he was here yeah. for. And we've talked about this offline before, too, is with center backs, they tend to take longer to kind of learn the position. So, like, a, a 22-year-old striker, because he's 22, like, that's, like, prime age. Like, go for it. But yeah. how often do you see a good center back that's 22, right? Like, they tend to be right. older. You know, maybe he's something that, you know, in four years, he's going to be great. He could be. So, yeah, no. And I, I know that I have seen him at city two and he performs very well there. So there's just a disconnect that he's just a young man. He's still learning and we are, I think we're in good hands with him in the future. Like what you're saying, it's just, you've got to be a very strong, very fast person. 
and he's just not quite there yet. But I'm also 43 years old sitting in my basement talking about a 22 year old, you know, Your playing a space in sport. But it's, I, you know, I'm, no, and this is definitely my house, but <laughs> my house. I'm a man, I'm 40, you know. But, you know, I don't, I think that there were, I think there are some teams that are in far worse position than we are for to have a 22 year old center back. So I was okay with him. What about you? Yeah, I, I like you said, I, I pretty much echo everything you just said. He he was yeah. adequate. He I don't, wouldn't give him a gold star necessarily. Maybe a pat on back, like not too bad. He could be a right. future sub for us. I, I wouldn't start him over Yarrow or Parker or Nilsson or even Hebert, to, to be honest. So oh yeah, yeah. I think I, I think over time, I'm actually optimistic with him. Now, you had mentioned Berkey, and we got to talk about this because I think we kind of saw two different things on the PK. Okay. What did you feel about that? So basically, just remind everybody, we had the very lovely uh, penalty, which... No call? Probably wasn't yeah. a penalty. Like, come on. Like, they should have at least had the on-field ref make that decision. And here's why. We were actually talking about this a few minutes ago, and that's... Every ref calls a different game. And because that was so borderline of a call, you can't have another ref over in Varland making the call whether to review that or not. You need the on-field ref because they, you know, they might have leaned a little left or right on that call. I felt like that should have been a video review. The fact that it wasn't reviewed by the official is a disgrace. Like, that is an absolute disgrace because looking at that play from multiple, I don't even think it was clear who, was it clear who was who got the penalty? It could have been Thor and it could have been someone else, but like, who actually got the penalty? Because when we're looking back at it on the Apple, on the on the TV, you can't tell. If it was Thor, I don't know where the penalty was because I don't even think he touched him. Like, but the fact that that damn call can affect a score like that is infuriating because we would have been two points away from ninth place if we win this game and now we're soon and that's a huge Great. difference especially for a team like you said earlier in this podcast where of the remaining 15 games left we only have six at home and we know how hard it is for any team especially this damn team to win on the road so like for something that's going to have an immediate effect on the game an actual score should be reviewed and a PK should be absolutely reviewed. And if the if the call is right, great. If the call gets overturned, fine. We can be angry, but that absolutely that, that no. okay. That's what I saw. Like just just the foul, just the play. What did you see before we talk about the PK? What did you see? Did you, do you think it was an actual foul? Do you you know what did you? What are your thoughts so, on that? I'm assuming that they called it on the contact with the foot, not the elbow handball. So I'm assuming that wasn't it, especially because the arms were tucked in. I think how you've been calling this game, which is why like when, you know, like far was reviewing it for like four minutes, which is why we got the nine minutes or however much extra time added. Oh boy. That's why they should have said, Hey, on field ref, you need to look at this because it's borderline. Because this ref obviously was letting a lot of physical play go. And I think if he reviewed it, he would have said, well, Var, you guys might have thought it was a close review. But no, this isn't the kind of game I call. Instead, it was more of like, yeah, we agree with the initial call. No, no, you need to check it out. It was way too close. Right. I don't think this ref would have called it. There, Yes, there are some that may have called it. Those are the guys that call very tight game. That was not this guy, you know? So the actual it's play, insane. obviously the kick, the first time pretty much ever, Berkey actually saved a PK. And oh, then wow. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, it got kicked in. Now, the question was, is was Berkey off his line? And then something I kind of noticed, and you, you guys can check it out on replay, is that our players, there was actually three players that actually entered the penalty box before the kick. Now, 
The one thing I don't know is technically you can't enter the penalty box except for the kicker and the goalkeeper until the ball is kicked. I don't know if that's something that they typically would call back or not. Uh, Steve had mentioned before we started today, it's kind of like a throw in, you know, you throw it in and they don't actually, they, they kind of give you like a little grace movement. You can actually step yeah. over the line. I don't know if that's something that they would have called back, but do you think Berkey should have punched it out? Do you think the player should have worked harder to try to support Berkey? Uh, should Berkey have tried to deflect it better? You had asked, should, do we think that Berkey should have punched it out, punched it away from the, the kicker or should the team have rushed in sooner? And honestly, I think the answer to that is yes. Berkey probably should have done a better job of blocking it. But like the fact that he actually blocked a PK should like be like on a banner over his locker. Finally blocked the PK. Like like when I, I coach upward sports, I had to give like a different color star to every player. And he should definitely get a star for whatever color star is for blocking a PK. My man gets one. So he blocked a PK. Yay. Good job, Berkey. But like he probably could have done a better job of punching it away. And I did notice that from the replay after the the block, our players started and then they stopped. And then once Rios started sprinting towards the ball, then they followed. So like back to your statement of the players coming in the box, I don't know if they thought that they had to wait or if the referee even maybe motion for them to wait, I don't know what happened there, but you could tell like they kind of started and then, then they took yeah. off. And so there was a momentary pause. So like, I don't know, but the fact that the, he blocked a, a PK is just golden for me. And sometimes the ball is going to take a bad, bad motion wherever you put it. So that was just a, that was a bang, bang soccer play. I think you would say it was a bang, bang play. And you can't really fault anyone because it happened. You fault the referee for allowing it to happen in the first place. We've got Vancouver coming up and they're not going to be an easy contest for us. So like sitting here complaining or if the team somehow is feeling it too, like that's not good. That's not good for them to we weren't about. So like we've got Vancouver and then we've got San Jose. We got San Jose at home on July 3rd. Like, that's going to be, that should be an easy game for us. But no, I mean, we're in 12th, that. they're in 14th. So oh, don't there's that. really no easy <laughs> games right now. Who do you think was the player of the game? Like for you, who was the player of the game? I most, so I, obviously the goal scorer always gets the man of the match. But I think that's kind of lame because that's just one play. And sometimes they're just in the right spot. And you're all, I, I got to say, Leuven, I felt like he was the most integral piece for this game yeah you know for the reasons yeah, i mentioned I agree. earlier what about you i'm no, surprised i, I totally Durkin. agree but i i also feel like i think Leuven is a good call because of his presence of the 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 calls that the the passes he had his presence out there he defended vasilev later in the match and then like he got physical with another player and almost got a yellow himself from this little teenager of a referee we had like he is just our captain. Like he is, he is him. Yeah, I mean, so it, it, it's our. I mean, yeah, you're right. The goal scorer usually gets it. You know, according to Fop Mob, Berkey was the man of the match simply because of his rating, which was 8.1. But guess who also had an 8.1? Lufin. And guess who had an 8.0? Klaus. Like our players were the better players of the match, and we just we got nothing out of it. We're going to have a little fun here. A little 20 second opinions. You ready for this? I got a few Twitter things I want to see your opinion on. So the first one is Matthew Rasho. Uh, he's the ESPN guy. He said, these ratings are trash. Look me in the eyes and tell me Totland was the worst player on the back line. You can't do it. Totland was rated 6.5 on FOTMA. Do you agree or disagree? I don't. I I didn't see a lot of his plays. Wenzel made the like the, the more obvious negative plays, but like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna if if I'm going to uh, use Fop Mob's ratings for like the good stuff, I'm going to then accept it for the other stuff. I imagine that they do a pretty average job of 
scaling the player. So, yeah, I think tonight Dalvin may have been the worst player on the back line. What are you going to do? Argue with him? No. I think from what I saw, Dalvin never stood out to me. Like, I never saw a lot of Vanada stuff from Dalvin. What about you? I don't know. I mean, Totlin for me has just been, man, one of the man of the years for the team. Right. You're right, though. Like, I, I felt like the back line did pretty good today. So, like, if you're the worst yep. one out of good, that's still good, you know? So, I, right. maybe his rating wasn't the 6.8 or whatever I said it was. I, you know, in the sevens, sure. Okay, next one. John Love said that home draws are losses. I agree with this, but in the context of City's current season with our big dogs coming, or cats as you say, in a few games, do you think home draws are losses for City? Well, not this one, because this almost like we, yes, we were in the winning position and we went up drawing. So that's not good, but the the goal was off of off of PK that probably shouldn't have happened. So like this wasn't we scored two goals and we wind up giving up two goals later in the match. Like this was this doesn't feel like a loss. This honestly feels like a draw. There's plenty of draws that have felt like losses. And I don't agree with that opinion that a home draw is a loss because you're still splitting the points. You still get a point out of it. So no, I don't agree with that. That is a what do you call it? like that is just like just clickbait that was bait that 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 tweet was bait it's a garbage tweet john fair enough so we talked about the refereeing earlier thomas welch said that this was the worst ref game ever for city do you agree or do you think we should shut up about this man i don't know if welch remembers the the inaugural home playoff match we had last year against Kansas City where that fucking uncle basically made sure we lost that game. So no, no, I don't agree. This is the worst match. This is the worst officiating. This is bad. Far from the worst. We've in there less than two years, but no, I was at that match and I am getting angry just thinking about those calls that he made in Kansas City's favor. Like, no, this is far from the worst. This is bad. Far from the worst. There's some this year I'm pretty sure we're we could point out was that we're worse. So no. How about oh how about the RSL match where Durkin got a handball call that shouldn't have happened? How about that? We can look back. That is the gold standard now for what a handball call should or should not. Oh my no. How can this be the worst match ever when that damn thing happens? Yeah. I, I know, right? This was petty. Like this game was a referee being petty. Like, I almost don't even think this is an aptitude. This is a guy just wanting to have his moment. Like, that, the, the Dirk and handball call and then the sub last year with Uncle, that shit was just bad officiating. So, no. Okay. Justin Horker had said with two tweets, uh, the first thing he said is that Berkey basically had said, I was actually ha really happy with Winslow and Jay Reed. Jay had a good game, gets his first assist, and he had a bright very bright future. And then Justin Horniker also said Jay Reed is also playing, not playing like someone with a single minute of MLS experience before tonight. Like, mm -hmm. AKA he's not a complete rookie. Agree, disagree. Right. Yeah. No, like I actually saw that tweet too. So I guess I'm kind of cheating, but like, I, I mean, if the, if Berkey is happy with it, like I am happy to like, I, we had said like Reed did really well. Winsa was okay. And I, I think the, I think like the baseline, the Mendoza line should be like, did Berkey, did you get angry Berkey? And like, I'm telling you, that's my meme, dude. Like angry Berkey, it sounds like Berkey wasn't angry. Like Berkey definitely will call out his, his line and Berkey's not doing that. And I also saw that Jay Reed was asked about his feelings in the locker room. And he's still saying that he's just, this is such a cool moment. Like he is only it feels like it feels like a video game still to him. It doesn't feel real for him to have been in a major league game. Like that's the kind of passion that we we need. And that's awesome. Like this young man played his heart out tonight. Played really well. And Winslow did too. Like they showed Winslow right before he came out. He was out there like banging his hamstrings. He was getting locked up. He literally put everything he had out there. And 
You can't fault them for that. Yeah, we can talk about their performance. and But no matter what happened on that back line, that back line did not give up a goal tonight. That back line did not give up a goal. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Matthew Rocho, the ESPN guy, had put on here, Kojima continues to be an absolute monster. He has been active all over the middle in attacking thirds, but hasn't had to go as far back to collect the ball like he did on Wednesday. Stats, 12 touches, 6 out of 8 passing, 1 key pass. Doesn't do his game justice. And then he also said, can't get over the early pass from Kojima. I think the list of players on this team that make that pass instead of Sky in it themselves is just Luvin and Kojima. Calm, decisive, incisive. Kojima is many things that this city attack usually is not. That's true, man. Like, especially this year, like... He, like, I just, I test. He passes the eye test every time. He sees strong, like, seeing him in person the other day on Wednesday, just the way he can clear a field. He is a, he is a beast, and I am really glad that he is, he is, he has this moment. It's unfortunate that Pompeo getting hurt is what gives him this moment. However, he is making the most out of it. He's making he, was, he is uh, he's he's a rookie. It's so wild watching this young man play. But he was a beast at Wake Forest. Like this is not a a new thing for him. This is how he played. Yeah, I it's going to be interesting to see what kind of formation we have when we get the new guys coming in. It it looks yeah. like probably Hartzell's going to play the attacking midfielder, and then as the second striker or maybe a winger, Toyer might be there or it might be flipped. But if those two are there, that basically leaves Klaus and probably Indy as the right wing. Unfortunately, that's going to sideline Kojima. But one thing that I'm actually happy about, though, is, man, that's going to give us some pretty awesome depth. Because you know injuries happen. You know that people need to be rotated out. And Kojima not, can not only play the center midfielder, but he also can play as that wing. So I'm actually kind of happy about seeing this is, yeah, he may not be our everyday starter, but that's one heck of depth piece that you have here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's one of those good problems to have. You know, he is. And I, I, I yeah, once these new guys come and we get them, we get them kind of in the fold, like, what do we do with them? Man, another great super sub. Like that's but like he puts in so many minutes, like he'll go and. Like there's been games where he'll go and play on Saturday night with with City One, and then he'll show up at City Two the very next day, and he'll put in 45 minutes. Like he just he's he's just so amazing to watch. And yeah, no, I totally agree with that tweet. Like there's not many players on our team that could make long passes and straight passes like like he can. It's good. So for our last game of tonight, let's look forward to our next game. What would you do different, and what would you keep the same? going into the next game, whether it's roster, strategy, formation, you name it, you, Mr. Steve, are the coach Me. for tonight. Yep. It's all you, bro. I, I'm i probably going to stick with the 4-4-2. I, I think it worked well tonight. I Like I like I mentioned, like with the 4-2-3-1, uh, you've got Klaus just kind of running around, not being that point, just – feel like he has to go one side or the field or the other. And this kind of stuck him on one side, and he seemed more comfortable. He made a pretty cool, amazing passes tonight, and I want to see them continue that. I don't know exactly what the format, what the lineup was going to be, but I think we stick in that formation. I felt that a lot of players felt comfortable in there. Like, that kind of tricked me. I thought we would go back to the 4-2-3-1. I really did, but the the four four two seemed to work well. Yeah, with the the formations being with the lineups and what they are, we'll have to see what what we have available for next week. But yeah, I think keep the four four two. What do you think? What do you coach AJ? It's up to you. You must save us. What do you do? The galaxy. Needs so you. I agree. I got two possibilities. I agree with you. I do like the two striker with Kloss because he's a player who's very unselfish who will look to make the pass, and you need somebody up there with him basically to play off of. That's when he scored much better, like when we had Gio here and all that. The other thing is, is kind of like what they do with Sam. Like when Klaus and Sam were in, they started actually doing the 4-2-3-1 
where Klaus became the attacking midfielder and actually played underneath Sam. I'm kind of curious. Should mm. Klaus be in that role? He likes to play back anyways. He likes to play out of position. He likes to try to be that playmaker. Should we just let him? I mean, it's completely against his DNA. Like, he probably wants to be called the striker. <laughs> Coaching wants to call yeah. him a striker. But he's playing as that, like, false nine playmaker. I, I say we let right. him. And then just put a striker up top that's going to hover in front of the net. Yeah. As long as it's yeah, not the role that... As long as it's not Thor. Right, Joe. Just any... Yeah, no. Honestly, we should replace Thor. Anytime he's on the field, as coach, I'm at, at the one-minute mark, I am replacing Thor with our mascot. And you know what's funny about that? We don't have right. a mascot, so I'm not replacing him, and I'll go 10 players down because that's what it's like. Just a bowl of ravioli there. out there. Just a bowl of toasted <laughs> ravioli. Just throw it on the other field. team. Hey, so, so I just saw, do you know how many exact minutes we went without scoring a goal well you 300 said 300 to be 41 341 Ooh. minutes without scoring Ooh. a goal ourselves yeah that's not great for a team but the proverbial monkey is off our back on that one so now we and can you go know, win we got the score out of yep. the way now we can go win a game Woo! and you know that that's how it happens in sports right like we, we saw that yeah. with the cardinals like Teams go on runs. Once you kind of start that, open that floodgate, sometimes shoo, the scoring can flow. So I, I agree yeah. with you. No, we've we've discussed momentum is a real thing. Momentum is 100% a real thing. It gets in your head. It gets in that success to get in your head. And I think we discussed, like, we joked that, like, Dr. Sharon from uh, Ted Lasso needs to come in and talk to this team. And the team actually has a – clinical psychologist from SLU on board. And so like maybe this person is working with them and like success, success breeds success. And let's hope we can go in there and get one against Vancouver. Because right now they're at 25 points. We're at 19 points. We're not going to be able to jump them, but we could jump Seattle and Dallas if we win and they lose. So like we're just all of a sudden now we're back up into 10th place if we beat them mm. in their home which we couldn't do last year. So, Well, it's going to be tough. I don't know if we've mentioned this, but out of the 15 games remaining, we only have six home games. And the thing is, is in general, this is very rough. In general, the home team is going to win 50% of the time. About 25% of the time, you're going to get a draw. 25% of the time, the way team is going to win. That's yeah. the type of statistics we're up against. We need to be good, in good form. And it needs to start with Vancouver. So I hope we enjoyed having multiple games in a row at home because we never have that for the rest of the season either. For the rest of the season, none of those games are going to be other than the stupid League Cup games, which we can just ignore those. But like Dude, those are real games. games. We do not, we do not enjoy any games back to back at home. So enjoy them. Yeah. So you can find us at BRB Fancast on anywhere you may. Waste your time on the internet. Twitter, X, Facebook, Instagram, which we do have an Instagram account. Uh, Facebook, which you will find myself and as Maze Zipper and AJ. And you'll also you'll see me as BRB Fangas Steve, but also Maze Zipper for some reason. And AJ is on there too. We will have our weekly lineup games, which we were the first. We also have our fan polls, and we also have multiple interactions throughout the week. And don't forget, if you ever want to join us as a part of this panel or an interview or anything, let us know. DM us, message us, send a smoke screen. We will find it. Trust us. And we, you are more than welcome to be on part of our crew. You want to yell at us? Do you want to yell at my stupid beard? Great. That's fine. I'm You're okay right. with that. You want to yell at my dog that's great he's a cool dog that's fine you want to yell about durkin's pants don't do that but come on and hang out with us so before we go we actually do a fan poll after every game and i try to put it up right before the 80th minute or so and right now like the 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 fan polls i like this because right now the offensive man of the match is on our poll is Kojima. Right now, the fans, we have like six or so responses, and Kojima right now is leading that. The defensive man of the match, of course, is Berkey. 
the wooden spoon, the worst player, which I we finally agree with everyone, Nukovi Thorson is going to be the wooden spoon for this week, which is deserving. So that is right now our responses. Don't forget to fill that out, guys. It's cool. And then usually it's about what? About two or three days, we'll end up posting the results. You'll see it on our May Zipper or BRB Fancast, Steve. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that sounds good. Well, on that note, guys, we end for today and we hope for the best next week. Hopefully, next week we're talking about something much better. Till then, yes. for City. Uh, for sure. Go for it.